Welcome to the channel everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a quick guide how to appraise and evaluate Japanese woodblock prints. If you're new to the channel, please hit the like button if you enjoy the video and subscribe so that you can get more content like this and other videos about Japan, society, life, and culture. I've been living in Japan for 16 years now, so I have quite a bit of experience. And if that's something that interests you, go ahead and subscribe. Now, getting into this short guide, basically I'm going to be giving you information on how to tell if a print is real, a reprint, or a fake. I'm also going to be telling you about how you can evaluate or go about evaluating the possible value of a particular print. Now first, I'm going to get right into it and give you the first question that you should ask yourself. If you are looking at a print and you're thinking about buying it, the question is, is it a really famous print? Is it by a really famous artist? Is it part of a famous series of prints? If so, then it's more likely to be a reprinting or recut or possibly even a fake print because let's be perfectly honest if it's not a famous print by a famous artist or part of a famous series no one's probably going to recreate it recut it or go through the trouble of faking it if it's not going to be basically worth their time getting beyond that question we take a look at the prints themselves to determine whether they are real or not, and there are a few different ways to do that. The two easiest ways to know if it is a real woodblock print and not a modern reprinting from a printer is going to be looking at the paper itself. The paper itself, the first thing you should be able to notice when you inspect the print is significant bleed through of the print to the other side. If this is blank and the print is only on one side of the paper or if there's just a little bit of light tracing you can see through it, it's not a real woodblock print on handmade paper. The second way to recognize handmade paper or not is when you hold a print up to the light you should see horizontal or vertical lines, depending on the orientation of the print, you should see light, almost like watermark, horizontal or vertical lines, and that is from the traditional paper making process, where when the paper is basically finished, it's laid to dry on these chain racks, and those lines are from lying on those racks. So if you don't see those lines, then you're dealing with modern paper and a modern printing. Okay, now that we've verified that it's at least a woodblock print, how do we know if it's a reprinting or the original from the Meiji or Edo period? There really is no substitute for experience in this regard. So the more prints you've had, the more prints you've inspected, the more prints you've seen in museums or just passed through your possession, you'll have a better and better idea. But there are a few things you can look at. First of all, if the print seems to be in way too perfect condition, it's probably a reprinting. And if it's a famous print, my honest advice is if it's a Hiroshige, one of the 36 views of Fuji or a Hokusai, something like that, be sure to just buy them from reputable dealers. Those famous prints, you can generally get a reprinting, a genuine Japanese woodblock print reprinting that will be anywhere from $50 to $200 depending on the print. This particular print, because it's not a famous series and it's a moderately famous artist, I'm pretty well assured that this is an original and there are other things on the print that lets you know that it's old. So like what we call foxing or these these light brown 
stains that come on from age, a general browning of the paper as well. Of course, the less you have of that on an original, the higher the price will be. Obviously, the better condition a print is, it's going to be more expensive. So what are those condition things that we need to look at? One of the first things you can look at are margins. Here you can see this is basically an untrimmed print. It's the original size. It's got the full margins around the picture itself. You can see on this print that there's, there's no white around the picture itself. It is trimmed. This was basically trimmed maybe to put into a frame or maybe trimmed to put onto a wall hanging of some sort, um, like a scroll or a screen. So yes, if the print is trimmed, then its value goes down a little bit. There's other things that you can see in this print, for example. There are some uh, what we call wormage or basically insect damage. There's some what basically looks like something has chewed on the paper a bit. Paper is edible to various critters and so if something's been sitting in storage a long time, there's a possibility that there will be wormage or insect damage. Actually, this one's not very much, it's a little bit in the corner here. This particular print has been folded at some point. There's a center fold here, which again will affect the value. And very often along the top, you will find pinholes where someone has actually done just that. They've pinned the print to a wall or to a screen or something. And so prints with pinholes on them are not that uncommon. Vibrancy of the colors. This is a very, very vibrant print. I, this was obviously well stored and didn't see a lot of sunlight because the colors are vibrant as opposed to a print like this, which you can see the colors are quite faded. Um, I mean, it's still colorful, but it's not terribly vibrant. I mean, if you look at them side by side, you can definitely tell a difference in the, how the colors have held up over time. And if you get all the way back into Edo era, I mean, this print, it's basically faded to just kind of some browns and blacks and shades of gray because it's just old and it's seen a lot of light and seen a lot of age. Another thing to note about this print is that it has been reinforced at some point with some backing or backing tape and there's still residue of that on this print and that is another sign of having a little bit less value. The more pristine the paper is, the more value the print will have. Here is an example of a print with a full backing, meaning it has been reinforced entirely with a different sheet of paper that's been basically pasted onto the back. And you can tell like someone was writing and this is some kind of records that was put on the back of this print to reinforce it. It's stiffer as a result. And even so, you can still get a relatively nice bleed through on the other side. Yes, if there is a backing of any sort on it, then the value is a little bit less. And if there is a backing on a famous print and you can't see the bleed through and you're not sure and you're not dealing with someone you know is a reputable dealer, you might want to pass. Now finally, there's some additional fine details that you can get into to determine if a print is good condition or close to an original printing or not. And that is when you inspect a print, it's nice to see actual wood grain pattern in the background of the print. If you see actual wood grain, then you have an assurance that it actually was a block of wood that was used to make the print. And that also serves as a fingerprint. You can compare what you know is an original. And if you can see the wood grain in that, compared to the print that you are thinking about buying or that you have in hand, if the wood grain pattern is completely different, or if there's no wood grain pattern at all, that tells you something about whether it's an original, a reprinting, or a fake. And is it close to an original printing as in one of the first ones to come off? Because 
that wood grain pattern gets sort of smoothed down over time. So if it's really prominent on the print, as it is in this one, you can really see the woodblock grain in this print, then it was probably a very early pressing of the print. And if it's there, but it's kind of hard to make out, it's probably one that has been printed many, many times. And this particular page is one that came out later. Now, another small detail to determine if it is a early printing or a later printing in terms of how many times that wood block has been used and pressed to paper is looking at the fine block lines. Look at strands of hair or the bridge of the nose or like lines in the hand that make up. Generally, those are going to be really fine, thin black lines. And if they are solid and whole, you can be sure that it was an early printing and the wood block was not totally worn down yet. If there are gaps, if there are pieces missing in that bridge of the nose, like little black lines that are missing, then it's probably a later printing. And those are one of the details that can affect the value of the print. Even this print, which in general is not in very good condition, when you look at the noses and the finer block lines on it, the fine strands of hair, it's actually not, not bad, not bad at all. You can see a few little gaps like um, on the back of the woman on the left, the, her neck and the right cheek of the woman on the right side, the lines aren't perfect. Okay, to review, does the print have a backing? Can you see the bleed through? Are those lines from the paper drying in the making of the handmade paper? Are they there? Are the block lines clear? Are the colors vibrant? Are the margins trimmed? Are there any pinholes? Is there any insect damage? Is there any uh, folding or pieces missing, backing? These are all, all things that can help determine the value and price of a print. But if you love the print, and you're not so concerned if it's the best condition of the print that you've ever seen. If you love the print, I recommend you buy it because you don't always get many chances to get your hands on prints that you really love or enjoy or want to have in your home. And again, buy from reputable dealers as much as possible and get things appraised if you are a little bit suspicious but hopefully this short guide gives you a little bit of ammunition and understanding that you can use when you're shopping for woodblock prints in Japan or wherever you're from, if you have any antique stores selling them in your area. I hope this was useful. Thank you so very, very much for watching this particular video. And again, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button because it really, really helps the channel to grow. And subscribe if you want more content about ukiyo-e, about Japan, and my other hobby, which is sneakers. If you are interested in any of those things, hit the subscribe button, and I hope to catch you on the next video. Peace.